You're unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. Today's lesson on waves is going to be a really big vocabulary lesson. There's a lot of words that you need to know what they mean. And I'm going to use these words pretty much every day this unit. So you really, really need to know these words. So let's talk about waves. Um, we want to start off by talking about what is a wave. Well, a wave is a disturbance which causes energy to be transported from one location to another without a transfer of mass. What it means is, imagine hitting your hand on the table really hard, and that disturbance is now causing the energy to kind of transfer through that table by the table vibrating. That would be a wave traveling through it. Now, there's two different classifications of waves. We have mechanical waves and electromagnetic waves. Uh, we also call that EM waves for short. Now, a mechanical wave um, is a wave that's produced by a disturbance in a physical medium. Now, the word medium means it's the uh, material that, um, that, that the wave is traveling through. Another word that we like to use is propagate. So the wave will propagate through the medium, or it'll travel through the medium. Now this medium is going to move back and forth or kind of wiggle and a nice fancy word for the wiggling is an oscillation. So the medium is going to be moving or oscillating back and forth which causes energy to be transported from one location to another. Now examples of mechanical waves include ocean waves, sound waves, earthquakes, things like that. Anything that's of a physical nature. Now, EM waves are created by oscillating electric and magnetic fields. So think of electric fields as being uh, like the when you take a balloon and you rub it on your head and stick it to the wall. The reason why that balloon sticks to the wall is because of those electric fields that's created by rubbing that balloon and stripping the electrons. And then the magnetic field is what causes a magnet to stick onto a refrigerator. So think of these little magnetic and electric fields that are oscillating back and forth. Now the really interesting thing about EM waves is that EM waves don't need a medium to propagate, which is amazing. For the longest time we thought that there had to be a medium because all waves have a medium to propagate through. But EM waves don't. They do not require a medium and they can just self-propagate. They can just travel through themselves. Now, EM waves include things like visible light, x-rays, ultraviolet radio waves, infrared, uh, pretty much anything that's in that light spectrum. Those are all EM waves. Now, EM waves uh, in many ways are similar to mechanical waves in their properties and the way they behave. But we're going to talk about EM waves and some of their special characteristics that they have uh, in, in a couple of days. But everything we're learning about with mechanical waves also apply to EM waves. So we're just going to focus on mechanical waves today, but know that these same principles apply to light. Now there's three different types of waves. We have a transverse wave, and I'll, I'll show you a little picture and an animation of this so you can visualize it in just a moment. But the definition of a transverse wave is where it's the particles of the, of, uh, excuse me, where the particles of the medium move perpendicular to the wave motion. So it's like, uh, Imagine each little particle in the material moving up and down, but the wave is moving forward. Now, a longitudinal wave is where the, the, uh, the particles of the medium are moving parallel to the wave's motion. So it's like a material that's wiggling forward and backwards, or it's oscillating forward and backwards, and the wave is moving forward. And the last kind is called a surface wave. And this is pretty much just a transverse wave and a longitudinal wave put together at the same time, behaving um, in both ways at the same time. So look at this little picture here. We can see that we have um, this wave where it comes up here and down here. And these little dots represent the medium. So let's say that this medium here, these dots are each little tiny particle of a rope. And we send a nice little flick down the rope. So the medium is moving up and down, but the wave is traveling down the rope or along with the rope. 
So the medium's moving up and down, but the wave moves forward. So this is why it's called a transverse wave. You can think of it like uh, the transcontinental railroad. It's kind of, it's crossing the continent. So the medium is crossing the wave. The wave moves forward, the medium goes up and down. Now the highest point up here is called the crest, and the lowest point is called the trough. Now here's a little animation of what, would, what it would look like. If you look at any of these little individual dots, I mean, pick out any random dot in this animation, and you'll notice that this dot just moves up and down repeatedly. It's oscillating up and down. But the wave is traveling forward, and that's why it's the transverse wave. And now you can kind of see what that looks like on a very, very small scale. Now, a, a longitudinal wave acts very similarly to a transverse wave, except for the difference that the medium is wiggling forward and backwards. So these little dots would be moving forward and backwards, and the wave is moving forward. Right here where the dots are at their most dense, that is called a compression. It's where everything is compressed together. And right here in the middle where it's all empty, or it's more empty, that is called a rarefaction. And here's a little animation of what that would look like. Now, if you just kind of sit back and relax, it kind of looks like there's some dots that are moving forward and some dots that are moving behind it backwards. But once again, if you pay really close attention, pick out any one dot in this animation, and that dot is just wiggling a tiny little bit. Every dot in this entire, oops, every dot in this entire animation is just wiggling back and forth. But the entire wave is still moving. So this energy that's is being transported through this medium as because these particles are kind of wiggling back and forth. Now a surface wave would look kind of like this, where if this were a single particle, this little red dot, it kind of travels in a circle like this, and the wave is traveling along in that same direction. So it's kind of just the combination of transverse and longitudinal. And here's what it looks like. So if you look at these two blue dots, one up at the top and one right here, you notice this dot is kind of going in circular elliptical paths, and the wave is moving forward. What's interesting about surface waves is they're not completely uniform. When you get down here at the bottom, you notice that it has really, really small motions. And up here at the very top, it has really, really big motions. This is how water waves work. If you've ever been snorkeling or scuba diving, you'll notice that down really, really low, I mean, even if you just went 10 or 15 feet down into the water, 20 feet down, it seems much, much calmer than it is up at the very, very surface. And you kind of, at the surface, you kind of get tossed around up and down, but down at the bottom, you only feel the motion just a tiny little bit. Now, a wave pulse is a single disturbance that travels along the medium. So imagine you take the rope or like a spring or a string of some kind, and you give it just one quick little snap. You get one little wave that travels down that medium and propagates through that rope. And that is called a wave pulse. It's a single pulse of a wave. Now, there's four different things that I really want you to know about wave properties and, and kind of the anatomy of a wave and how to really talk about it. And this first is the period, which is a capital T. We've talked about period being capital T before. It's a T because it's time, but it's a very special time. It's just like the pendulum that we did on the very first day of class, um, where the period is capital T. This is the amount of time that's required for one complete wave to pass by a position. The frequency is a lowercase f, not to be confused with force, which is an uppercase f. So lowercase f is frequency, and that's the number of waves that pass by per second. The wavelength is how long the wave is. And that's probably the easiest to remember because in, in the word itself, it's defined wave length. It's the length of the wave. And the way you would measure it is taking how long the wave is from one point to the next point on the wave that's at the exact same point on the wave, meaning like from the crest to the crest or from the trough to the trough, that distance would give you wavelength. And the units are in meters. It's how long the wave is. This weird little symbol that looks kind of like an upside down Y, that is called lambda. It's a Greek letter, and we use that to denote wavelength. 
the amplitude, or capital A, is the maximum displacement of the medium from the rest position. So it's like how tall the wave is. So if the ocean were completely flat, and then you measure one wave that's 10 feet tall from where it was, from that flat part, the amplitude is 10 feet. The trough would also be 10 feet. The trough and the, the uh, crest should have the exact same amplitude. Now let's do a little sample problem of finding the period of a wave. Uh, let's say that we have 12 waves that pass by in 30 seconds and we ask what's the period of the wave. Well the period is the time for one wave to pass. So we take the total time, which is 30 seconds, and there's 12 waves. So if we divide that, the 30 seconds divided by the 12 waves, we would get 2.5 seconds per wave. So our equation is that time, or the, excuse me, that period is equal to the total amount of time divided by the total number of waves that are passing by. Now let's do the same problem, but finding the frequency of the wave. So once again, suppose that we have 12 waves that pass by in 30 seconds. What's the frequency? Well, the frequency is the number of waves per second. So we take the number of waves and we divide it by the total amount of time. And we get 0.4 seconds. And the unit of frequency is a hertz, hz. So we get a frequency is 0.4 hertz. So frequency is the total number of waves divided by the total amount of time. Now, period and frequency, <coughs> you'll notice that there's this interesting relationship where the period is time divided by waves. And for frequency, it's just the opposite, waves divided by time. This means that they're inversely related. That means period is equal to 1 over frequency and vice versa. Frequency is 1 over period, which makes life pretty easy for us because if I know one of these numbers, all I have to do is do 1 divided by that number, and that gives me the other one. Now, if we want to find the speed of the wave, we realize that waves typically travel at a constant velocity, so we use our constant velocity equation. But instead of using the d and the t, we've got to remember that distance was the wavelength, which is lambda, and time is period, so capital T. So if we plug that in, we get that the velocity is equal to the wavelength divided by period. And since period is just 1 over f, that tells us that velocity is also frequency times wavelength. Well, how do you know which one you're going to use? Well, if I give you period and wavelength, use this one. If I give you frequency and wavelength, you'll use that one. Pretty simple. Now, a quick little example of this. Let's say that we have a sound wave that has a frequency of 262 hertz and it has a wavelength of 1.29 meters. What is the wave speed? Well, if velocity is frequency times wavelength, then we're going to use that equation because we're given the frequency and the wavelength. We just plug it in, we multiply at 338 meters per second. And we get these units because remember that a hertz is a 1 over second. It's an inverse second. And so we get meters times a 1 over second. Now, here's a list of all of the words that I've really used that I want you to have paid attention really closely to. Make sure you know what each of these words mean. That way, when you hear me talk about them, you don't have to ask, what does that mean again? And I will get really, really mad at you if you keep asking me, which means now that I told you that, you guys are going to keep asking me. So don't ask, because I'll get really mad. Go ahead and watch the video a second time if you need help uh, remembering what any of these words mean. These are very likely going to be on the quiz that you are about to take.